Is AI a looming existential threat or the shot in the arm we all needed to improve our craft bit by bit? That's the question everyone is scrambling to answer. And if it's your first time here, my name is Jack Wang. I'm an Australian microbiology professor who recently tried to figure out if AI will take my job anytime soon. After spending a couple of days talking to chat GPT from OpenAI, I think my job as a professor is safe, at least for the time being. In fact, I'll go a step further. I think AI can help me get even better and more secure in my my job and there are lots of exciting new ways it can help 10 in fact oh but there was one big problem with ai kept coming up against more on that in a moment the top 10 strategies to use ai to improve education starting with 10 comprehensive coverage teachers and professors are time poor individuals actually i'm sure everyone is time poor these days but a big part of our workload happens before the semester even begins the fields we teach are always expanding and it's not a straightforward process to decide what needs to be covered in a single class lecture or across the whole semester until now. Instead of going through an exhaustive syllabus or curriculum review across all schools and universities every three, four or five years, we could maybe just ask AI. That's what I did, asking AI what I should cover in an introductory course about microbiology. And it gave me a list of really good learning outcomes that span across the whole field. This is really, truly impressive and not just applicable for teachers. Try yourself. Ask the chatbot, what's the most pressing issue in your field? Or what's the best way to improve the performance in your job? Or what's the hardest skill to learn in your area? It all sounds really impressive coming from AI, especially when you repeat it in performance appraisals or potential job interviews. The answers don't have much depth to them just yet, but this is what it does best, right? Curate all of the available information it has access to and synthesize it into something humans can understand. The list of learning objectives that it gave me may be comprehensive, but you still need a knowledgeable teacher at the end of the day to break each topic down in more depth bit by bit for students. Before we get into the next strategy, let's come back to that one problem I mentioned earlier. AI has a terrible sense of humor. You don't need to be the world's best comedian to be an effective communicator, but lighthearted banter is at the heart of what we do. It's a great tool to have in your teaching and social repertoire. AI's comedic sensibilities are, let's say, robotic at best. To prove this to you after each strategy of the 10, I'll read out a jerk that AI came up with. I've asked my wife to write them out by hand on these cards. So uh, it'll be my first time reading them too. Try not to kill the messenger here. Why did the insurance agent sell comprehensive coverage to the skydiver? He wanted to make sure he was covered from head to toe. Back to strategy nine, connecting the dots. Once you have a list of topics to cover, there's no specific science to how they may be presented. Most concepts build on previous concepts to make sense, but if we can connect these concepts to the broader world or students' everyday lives, this immediately shows an application of that information. I mean, just try to explain what it is that you do in your everyday job to one of your closest friends or family or partners who isn't in the same field as you. How long do you give them before their eyes start glazing over? It's really hard making people care about things they don't know about, even if it's it's a really, really interesting topic and asking AI to curate the most compelling examples, stories or anecdotes in your field is a really interesting exercise filled with perspective. Again, this lines up with what the algorithm is trying to do anyway. Past different types of information it was trained with and try to present them in a way that connects with as many humans as possible to make the platform seem relatable. That's actually our mission as teachers and effective communicators as well. Speaking of connections, why did the mathematician draw a picture with dots? because he wanted to connect the dots. Are they all like this? Strategy eight, a thousand words or custom AI generated graphics. No one likes slides or worksheets with nothing but text. And sometimes a good graphic or diagram can get the message across that much more quickly. Diagrams and textbooks are the default option, but what if you decide to, let's say, switch textbooks as a teacher or the textbook provider updates their edition? It's a lot of extra work updating these figures or annotations every single year as a teacher. So using a custom original graphic may save you time in the long run. Or maybe you're starting a business, a YouTube channel or a podcast and want a custom logo or graphic. Yes, you can pay for licensed graphics and photos from everywhere or anywhere, but you can use AI as well. Dial E2 in particular, create some custom art based on any combination of keywords that you like with the one huge caveat that as of 2022, it's not clear where this art is coming from. Worst case scenario is that it's a composite of existing art made by unpaid and uncredited artists. So use this with caution. The ethics on this are quite ambiguous for the moment. I like the punchline in, why was the writer's laptop always full of pictures? 
because a picture is worth a thousand words. I think I see a pattern emerging here and it's not a good one. Strategy seven, automated forward planning. Our working days are all filled with a hundred tiny repetitive tasks, all of which take less than a minute to do, but add up and make you lose focus on the big picture. Let's say set an out of office message in Outlook or collate files in a specific folder based on their modified date or upload a YouTube video. All of these are possible to do using APIs and basic scripting, but what if you don't have any coding skills or experience? AI to the rescue. Just ask it to write a script and it will come up with a template for you to fill in the essentials yourself. Let's say file names or local directories, but the heavy lifting will have been done for you by AI. Speaking of heavy lifting, why did the snail go to the race? To win the trophy for best for planning. Does that even make sense? It's some kind of abstract humor or something. Wow. Strategy six, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Jargon, minutia, complexity are all tools that we use to safeguard our disciplinary expertise, but this is actually quite counterproductive in teaching and really all forms of communication. We try to talk to our friends and family, the general public, or let's say funding agencies about our work in science, for example, the disconnect in talking to our peers versus novices to our fields is simply too big to bridge. It's the reason that these terrible ideas get floated around like the pub test. Research projects can only be funded if they make sense to a drunken crowd in a pub or bar. These were floated about by politicians in my country a little while ago and thankfully vetoed for the time being. Explaining a concept though, so that a fifth grader can understand it, is a common way to reconsider how we teach or talk about our work. This is perfectly in sync with AI's interests as well and it's what the current iteration does particularly particularly well. Try typing in explain concept X so that a fifth grader can understand it and see what the platform comes up with. How different is it to your explanation of the topic in your first lecture? Should it be different to how you talk about that same topic in your last lecture of the semester? Being able to relate to different audiences with different levels of understanding of a particular issue is the foundation for all good communication. And in this case, it's AI's job to figure out how to do this well. Leverage what it's trying to do, use it. But what it doesn't do so well is why was the science presentation so boring because it was a bunch of theories and no experiments. Is it pandering to me here? Because this isn't funny. This is just the truth, right? Strategy five, conceivable misconceptions. Where are the answers? Can someone tell me the answers to this question? Students, but really anyone, don't deal well with the curse of the blank page and having nothing to work off or build on for first starting a worksheet or a practice exam is really quite daunting. What's the alternative though? Giving all the answers out? That's spoon feeding, right? No one likes giving the students more answers or more help than they really should get at that point in time. But what if you give them the wrong answers based upon common misconceptions on a topic and ask them to spot the errors? It's all of a sudden a great tool for learning and higher order problem solving, but it's really a lot of work writing these fake and incorrect answers with subtle nuance until now. Ask AI to answer the question and either deliberately change a few sentences or key phrases or ask AI to include a common misconception into its response. This generates an endless supply of slightly flawed responses that students can work out and work into their revision practices. But you know what's not a model response? Why was the math book sad? Because it had too many problems and no solutions. Strategy four, an audit for complexity. The easiest exam questions to write are also the ones that don't test for higher order learning. Define this term, list five things you know about this topic. These are information retrieval tasks rather than evidence of deep cognition and understanding. And I'll give you one guess of what is amazing at retrieving information from data sources. In the past, Googling your exam question was the only way to do this. And you still had to click across a few different sites to see the whole picture. If the answer comes up straight away, probably something that won't work in open book exams and really something that doesn't test for higher order learning anyway, like apply, compare and contrast, or justify and evaluate. AI takes this a step further. It synthesizes information from all the sources it was trained with, none of which you actually know, to come up with a holistic answer for your question. How long is the answer AI spits out? How repeatable is it when you ask AI the same question again and again? Does it stretch itself and describe things you didn't even consider when you wrote the question? If the answer is short, repeatable, and predictable, even with all the ingenuity and algorithmic might of AI, then your exam question likely falls short of the mark. You know what else falls short of the mark? Why did a student bring a ladder to the test? Because he wanted to climb to the top of the class. It's uh, too late at night for this. 
Strategy three, the new ideal. We're teaching because we're the expert, right? We know all the right answers and the students don't. So naturally marking should be this ephemeral gut feeling on how good any piece of student work is. Sadly, this no longer passes the muster with teaching quality assurance agencies and assessment standards frameworks. And you wouldn't like it either if you had to go through this process as a student. Students have the right to see a model answer to a question and in particular where their response falls short. That's classic assessment feedback. I don't know about you, but these model answers take me ages to write every semester. I'm also adapting them after reading through a few student responses because usually the good students have considered something I haven't. It's a drawn out iterative process that takes much longer than it really should. So why not use AI to do the first pass through and use AI's response as the skeletal starting point of the model answer you want students to come up with. Of course, don't take the AI generated response at face value, but compare it against student responses, add to it and amend it. It'll still save you a lot of time overall. You know what else needs amending? Oh. It's a different approach. It's a much bigger card. One of the funniest things about model exam answers is the way they can be interpreted. For example, a model answer might read, the correct answer is B because it addresses the question and provides a logical explanation. However, a student might interpret this as the correct answer is B because it looks like a B and Bs are very logical creatures. What the f Strategy two, can you beat the algorithm this time? The whole assignment revolves around a task, question, or topic, and the AI generated response to it upfront for everyone to see. Post it along with the assignment. The teachers can design the criteria however we normally design it, especially for your discipline, but with more of an emphasis on higher order capabilities because it's all with one goal in mind. How can students improve upon the AI response? In all likelihood, the AI's response will be fine spelling and grammar wise so students won't be able to top it on that front. It will also cover a number of valid points to convey a reasonable level of understanding so odds are students won't be more accurate than AI either, at least not by a big margin. So how can humans top this? Well, the students vary the type of evidence presented to support their argument, a mix of qualitative and quantitative to present a varied and overall more compelling story. They lean on specific narrative tools of persuasion and say leverage the expertise of big names in the field and their findings to convey their point. Do they pitch the response more appropriately towards a specific target audience, say other students, the general public or experts in the field, whichever you set for the task at hand? Or do they try other communication techniques and strategies, say analogy or metaphor in science communication or a well-timed joke at the right time to convey their points? Speaking of which, why was the computer cold? Because it left its windows open. All right. And for my number one strategy on how to use AI to improve teaching, breadcrumb trail. This is what I think is generative AI's biggest flaw in creating human-like responses. It makes the response look too effortless, seamless, like it's all original ideas completely from scratch. In this case, AI's business model goes against the grain of what we're looking for as teachers as the artifice of ingenuity is crucial to its magic, but the black box it creates around its process is decidedly unacademic. In science and really academic writing more broadly, we value peer-reviewed sources and evidence-based citations to verify the accuracy of any new piece of information. Presumably AI is able to scan any information that it was trained with in the public domain to synthesize original sentences and paragraphs, but it's not so quick to acknowledge the original source. In some cases, it even cites fake non-existent studies from well-known authors in the field to throw you off the scent. This presents a fantastic learning opportunity because you know who else struggles with referencing and citations? Literally every single student doing a piece of academic writing, whether it be their first, second or 10th attempt. Again, show them the AI generated response to a complex topic and go through it line by line. Which sentence is missing an attribution or a reference? Can they find the right study that initially made the discovery that was being discussed or coin that saying or properly annotate the AI's responses bit by bit. It sounds like a bit of a painful exercise, but there is a mystery box challenge vibe to all of this. Exactly where is this information coming from? How much can we trust this? Hopefully this becomes more transparent with AI in due course, but for the time being, we can leverage the mystery as part of the incentive for our students continued learning. If this topic interests you or scares you, you might wanna check out my last video linked here which goes through my attempt at seeing if AI will replace me as a microbiology professor. The coverage of AI that I've seen is overwhelmingly negative. 
and gloom and doom. If AI can replace how teachers assess students, then it also will potentially replace the jobs that the students will hope to get into after they graduate. The onus is on all of us to learn how to use the technology rather than be used by it. Oh, and before I forget, last one. Why was the robot feeling depressed? Because it was programmed to take over the world, but all it could do was make toast. I'll give it that one. One out of 10. It's pretty bad, but it could be much worse.